I saw you post that picture earlier. Picture earlier of the kitty swiping at me on the screen, pawing at your face. Yeah, but you know why she was doing that? She gave you a kiss too. Yeah, no, but to her, I was like this big. Yeah, she was trying to eat me, Tara. She thought no. I was a hamster. Whatever, whatever's on my screen, she sits there and paws at that. Like, yes, because she understand it. It, no, it's moving. It's smaller than her, so it must go in her mouth. No, but even if I have stuff like a movie playing full screen, she'll just sit here and be like... Yes. Why can't I touch the thing? Yes, because... I can't touch it. Because it's moving, and it's smaller than her, so hence it must be food. She rubbed her nose on you, too. But I didn't get a picture of that. You're you're being far, far too gracious to this creature. It's a cat. It's a psychotic creature. They they mur they kill for fun. But she's really sweet, kitty. <laughs> she gives me nose kisses. And if you were this big, did you? I don't know if you saw the oatmeal had this wonderful cartoon this week. It was like if I wish my kitty were big enough to give it a hug. In the next frame, the kitty's devouring her. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. But she's sweetie. She loves me. Only because she's little. She takes up two thirds of my pillow in the morning because the sun comes in my window. So she just like shoves my head over until she has the whole pillow so she can bask in the sun. See? See? So... We've got some old favorites this week. And in one case, quite literally, I guess, if well, if we want to actually use the term favorite that way. <laughs> Everyone can clearly... Well, now you have a better webcam. Everybody can clearly see her in the background trying to scale your desk. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, she's hunting bugs. Which way do I lean? <laughs> that way, there she is. Yeah, she's you're being a skeeter. You're being upstage. And so she has to hunt it. You're being upstaged. Ah, oh. what else is new? It's a kitty on the internet. Okay. So shall we begin? Let's do it. Okay, let's get the thing. Where is the thing? Where are you thing? Alright. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out and the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And, some, you know, this doesn't happen often. But with it, that we get a repeater on the show. That we get people who keep coming back and coming back. But, um, this, this guy... I think this is his second time, if not maybe more, on the show. People have pointed him out to me before. This is becoming his thing. Yes, this guy. Hamilton man arrested for again, again is the beautiful. Hamilton man arrested again for having sex with pool float. Edwin Toberta, I do believe I've said that name before, 35, was arrested Wednesday morning after a witness observed him standing naked on Route 4 in Hamilton, simulating sex with a pink pool flotation device. Police report witnesses said he was in full view of nearby businesses and passing cars. Toberta is previously arrested in what? June after he engaged with sex with a pool float outside his house in front of several children. He pleaded guilty to that offense, was sentenced to 11 months. In August of 2011, he was arrested for a similar offense involving having sex with a pink swimming pool raft. Now, it, they keep mentioning it's a pink one. You have to wonder, is it the same one? Is it like his, you know, significant other? Oh, that would be so <laughs> cute. If it, he and his pool toy mated for life. <laughs> The thing is, inflatable pool toys are not particularly well made, and those seams are sharp. 
and it's so, it's not a great texture either. It's it's made for yeah. to hold against you sliding off of it. Like, what's sexy about that? It's just it... now the the time with you know. Do you remember the video we ran of the guy popping balloons yes. in his eye? That was good times. You know, when he, when he did it in front of the kids, you could have thought maybe he just didn't know the kids were there. Maybe. But this time he went out to the fucking highway. Yeah. And put on a little show. Yeah, I don't get this guy at all. You know, I know it sucks that Blip cut a lot of people, but this is going a, far, a pretty far away to get a web series off the ground. That's the goal here. <laughs> I don't want to think about what the goal here is. Because the goal here is is just... Oh, okay, D.A. Scott Jr. Maybe he's, maybe he's trying to create like a master race of blow-up doll people. D.A. Scott Jr., whatever pokes your float, man. Well, that's is it the like the floats or like the noodles? They don't say. Cause I could see, I suppose, people getting into the noodles because you can bend them and shape them. But they're kind of like giant pipe cleaners, though. I still don't really get it. I just it. Why must you do this outside, sir? You do this outside and you go to jail. This has happened. It's kind, of bad, it's kind of bad enough that you have a compulsion to fuck pool toys. That's a really specific fetish when you have to fuck pool toys in public. This is the fourth time now. You would think they would that he would understand. You know, if I go outside and I put my dick in this. I'm going you'd to think, jail. You'd think there'd be like a 12-step program for this or something. The fact that there has to be is, is what's really disappointing here. What would you call that? I don't know. <laughs> to Toy Fuckers Anonymous? Come here. Come here. Don't coo at me. Come here. Is his bedroom mu music float on by Modest Mouth? You know what? Someone oh. someone needs to go back and get all the videos of this guy doing this and just do a float on montage. Yeah, but why wouldn't like someone? I it scrolled, but why wouldn't you just get a blow up doll? Because it's the same texture and it's made for that. And you know, it's a little bit more designed for the indoors than a pool float. Yeah. Like, why would you not just get a blow-up doll? I mean, I guess you could argue it's performance art, but it's like, you know, no, this didn't deserve what's, three encores. What's the message there? What's he trying to tell us? <laughs> He's trying to tell us, I want to go to jail again. Uh, okay, um, I don't, I'm not a big particular fan of having genetic offspring. I'm not, a, the whole idea of that just sort of makes me go. And, you know, people, they're like, oh, my kid's great, though. You should, you should, my kid's great. I love my kid. My kid's, I'm oh, you should love your kid. I'm sure everyone's kid is great, but, you know, it's not, it's the time, it's this kid. That scares the shit out of me. Mother tries to extinguish fire with water from dog bowl. Finds daughter filled it with gas. Oh, that's like a Stephen King movie, kid. And, and you're going, well, what is she, 16? No, no. Investigators say that a three-year-old girl mistakenly filled the water bowl with gas from a nearby canister. 
small house fire spread but the quickly. The question is, did that child also set the fire? They don't say, yeah, investigators are not sure how the fire started. Like, was this a funny joke or a diabolical thing? Yeah, you have to wonder, is it, did, did they like, you know, a little antichrist kid going on here? Because kids like to do weird things with pets that they think are pretty harmless. Like every time there's a box in the house, Patrick wants to seal Bridget up in the box and mail her somewhere. It's always different. This week he wanted to mail her to Massachusetts. Why? What, what the I, fuck I, is it, Matt? Why the hell would the cat want to go to Massachusetts? I, I don't know. What the fuck is in Massachusetts for the cat? In the winter, he actually put a stamp on her forehead and said we were going to mail her to Mexico. Why would the cat want to go to Mexico? I don't, I don't know what she would do there. But th this gets into his head, and every time there's a box, we've got to mail the cat somewhere. So kids just do weird things with animals that they, they don't think they don't mean any harm. So maybe she was just like, oh, he, 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 we'll put whatever this is in the dog bowl. And it was just a horrible coincidence, or maybe it was, well, there's... I'm going to either kill the dog or make the fire worse, or both. Well, it just... All right, for people in the well, channel are going, why was she... If she was able to make that kind of a plan, then she's both terrifying and impressive. People in the channel are going, why was there able... Why was the kid able to get a hold of gasoline? Well... Also an excellent question. Yeah. I, I'm willing to bet they kept the dog bowl and the gasoline in the garage, is my instinct here. Yes, but the gasoline should not be somewhere a three-year-old can get it. Though. I'm pretty sure they were thinking, oh, she'll never get into this. She won't be able to figure it out. No! They, they're... Also, wouldn't a canister of gasoline be pretty heavy? Have you ever seen a kid when they're determined to do something stupid? Is this like Hulk, baby? They don't, they don't, when they're little and they want to do something stupid, they are by God going to do it. They will get that adrenaline going just in order they're to just, do that stupid thing. There are just so many holes in this story. Don't you feel like that? Like, so why you, did you the baby have access to gasoline? Why did the baby put gasoline in the dog hole? Did the baby set the fire? Is this baby Loki or Hulk? Both? Is this baby Grey Hulk? I just, it, I, I love that last line. Investigators are not sure how the fire started. But they backed away very slowly and told that little girl she was very pretty. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Because I, I know if I had a kid, they would do some shit like this. Yeah, but you'd be helping them. Well, I don't think you'd I'd be, be helping them. You'd be teaching them how to do this shit. I would wait until, you know, they were... If I taught a kid how to do this shit, I would wait until they were able to be tried as an adult. Oh, they'll try a kid as an adult if they have to. See, I, I'll, I'll check the statutes first. <laughs> well, that's just responsible of you. Speaking of irresponsible... um. I think it's a really good thing that neither you or I are parents. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, you know, you just, the, this next story, when you look at the picture, your first instinct is alcohol was involved. And, ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I can get it. We got video. We, we most certainly definitely have video on this one. This is uh, from uh, where exactly? It's in the UK. I'm, you know, I think you think considering I'm going there, I should know this shit. I should know places in the UK, so as I don't get lynched for calling one place the other place because they take that shit serious. Um, especially if you're talking about football. 
when the when the article itself is calling you an absolute idiot in the headline well it's in quotes well that, that's yeah but uh absolute idiot runs into leicester race course and tries to sprint with horses oh spectator ran along the circuit sprint alongside the horses and and let's get the video up here for everybody you guys want to see it here we go has been banned from every race course in the country. You can no longer watch horses run fast in England, sir. There he goes. And here, and coming up on the outside, it's a dumbass. There he goes. You know, I would have been actually more impressed had he been able to keep up. What would make this seem like a good idea? I love how he's waving like it's like I'm like for a lane change or some shit. Like, look out, I'm coming over. And you know someone in the back is really drunk and going, I did did I bet on that one? Oh my god. What? I'm just watching it at least. Is that really how you want to die, bro? <laughs> Seriously! I feel like trampled by horses would be a pretty painful way to die. Jockeys are forced to position their horse on either side of the track to avoid the accident, managing to avoid the spectator, and finishing the race about 8.45 p.m. Um, Maybe no he one... thought he was the little rabbit that runs around the track. <laughs> to give them something to chase. That's not how that works, though. Well, no. You're doing it wrong. I love how the actual, the, the article says this, after he made his way onto the turf, the group quickly overtook the man. Of course they did! They're <laughs> horses! <laughs> drunk. Film at 11. <laughs> you know that the average house cat can run faster than Usain Bolt? Is Usain Bolt like Chinese or something? Usain Bolt, he's a Jamaican runner. He's I know, I know. Is it, is it like, you know... Was this like a a, a, a a survival instinct for the cat? It's like, holy shit, he wants orange chicken. Run! What? No, they just, they've clocked the average house cat, and they've clocked Usain Bolt, and most house cats can run faster than him. Uh, I don't know if they can run faster than racehorses. Video, his video says, were the words, hold my beer or watch this involved in any way? Likely. Do you like to think the Brit, that the Brits are classier than us? And <laughs> like, we always think that. I was just talking about this with my coworker the other day. Like, we always think that British people are so much smarter and more erudite and classy than us. And the accent kind of gives them that, you know? No. Because even if they do stupid shit like we do, it sounds better. With us. <laughs> but they have their dumb asses, too. We were talking about how they have their own version of Jersey Shore. And when I was in Ireland, I learned that there was, like, there are Irish guidos. They have, in Ireland, they have their own version of Jersey Shore. And they're interviewing this guy, and he's like, well, you know, I don't really like girls that aren't tan. And I'm like, bro, you live in Dublin. I know! Where are you going to find one? You have to import them. And I asked my cousins, I'm like, what do you call guidos here? Like, what? I didn't know you could have an Irish guido. And, and they looked at me and they're like, wankers? We call them wankers. And I'm like, no, but do you have like a name? Do they have like a term? And they're like, no. No. And I was kind of disappointed in that. I just, it, at no point did his survival instinct kick in. Have, have you ever seen someone kicked by a horse? It's like some Superman shit, because you go flying. It's like in one of those shows where they have the guy on the wire, it's invisible, and they pull him back to look like he got hit really well, really hard. It's like that, only without the wire. They, they don't. Yeah. There's always those stories, my cousin got kicked by the horse, he wasn't the same ever since. They're Horses fucking are bigger and stronger than you. This is one of those moments where just part of his brain was going, you know what? It's time to leave the gene pool. It's time. 
Come on. You know it. I know it. This is the guy that the bar really wished they'd stopped serving an hour. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. He's banned from all the, the race horses. And you know what? You can no longer watch horses run quickly in England ever again. Well, because... Oh my God. Do you know what this makes me think of? Have you ever seen My Fair Lady? Yes. The Ascot races. Come on, Dover, move your bloomin' arms. <laughs> this guy's totally like... The modern Eliza Doolittle. Somebody told him to just talk about people's health and the weather and the race, and he just got way too involved. Yeah, that's not how you win the bets, though. Because if your horse is running slower, you can't go out and encourage them. They don't like that. Well, you don't know. They might. That one might. Well, the horse maybe, might, but... Maybe that's why California Chrome didn't take the Triple Crown, because nobody ran out there to give him a hug. So, it, it, we keep... This is, again... It's been a while for this next one, but... It's not because... A couple of these showed up, but they just weren't good enough. But this one... This one was like... This story was like it was begging... To be on the show it was trying so hard it's like please put me on i'm like okay and what seals the deal is it's the associated press which makes it all the more perfect anna nicole reed is that what where, where's that no that's not that's not what the fuck is that headline coming from stupid html what was that is that her oh well never mind woman steals seven lobster tails in her pants, it's Florida. It's Florida. Of course it is. Central Florida woman faces petty theft charges after officials say she stuffed seven frozen lobster tails in her pants and walked out of a public supermarket without paying for them. Oh, yeah, Anna Nicole Reed, 30 years old. Um, loss prevention officer at the... It's Nicole Ann. I don't know if that's like a good thing you're doing. Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess it must be. <laughs> I associate insanity with Anna Nicole Smith. Wonder why. Yeah, Nicole Ann Reed put the lobster tails into her pants on Wednesday evening. He says she walked she walked around the store before leaving. According to a police report, she said she planned to trade the lobster with a friend to either go to a Chinese buffet or get the prescription medication to lot it. Those two things are not equal. Okay, I've been given the honor. <laughs> First of all, Delauda is the not fucking around stuff. Like, wow. But either the Chinese buffet or the Delauda? Is it like, you know, like, let's make a deal? Like, what's in the box? Are you going to take the, 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 are you going to take the prescription med? Or are you going to no, go Bondi? for what's in the box? Oh my God. This reminds me of a really terrible, totally false urban legend. Do you know the one I'm talking about? No. I think I might have mentioned it on the show once before because you got really mad at me. Yes, someone's mentioning it. I have. It's on Snopes. A chick who was masturbating with a live lobster. Yes, and the, yes, and the, uh, and the la, 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 Just look for munch shrimp on Snopes. Yes. La, la. Do you ever get that? you should be careful when you put lobsters down your pants because you could give birth to hundreds of munch shrimp. Do you ever get that not-so-fresh lobster feeling? I love how she put them in her pants and then walked around the store. What was she like? It's like trying them on, like a pair of shoes. Is like, well, she had to then stuff some lemons down her pants and some <laughs> butter. <laughs> you need other things. That's not a pleasant place for cold things to go. I don't care, man or woman. That's just that's not a happy. 
That's not. I mean, it depends on the cold thing. Lobsters are sh lobsters have sharp parts. What so is... no, I'm more worried about the sharp parts. Although it seems like they were wrapped. So this was this like a a plan, like a scheme? Did they work this shit out in advance? I'm still caught up on trying to trade it for either Chinese buffet <laughs> or heavy duty painkillers. Because one is worth considerably more lobster tails than the other. Or, or maybe just cut out the middleman and get lobster at the Chinese buffet. Well, it depends on how good that Chinese buffet is. Cause, like, they have tuna fish sandwiches at Dunkin' Donuts now. I'm not eating tuna salad from Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, just the sound of that. So it depends on the Chinese buffet. Like, there's pretty good Chinese buffet, and then there's that scary looking one right next to the laundromat that never opens the blinds. <laughs> You keep seeing people go in, but they never come out again. I was in Boston once, and um, we had a friend who was Chinese, and he said he was going to take us to this really good restaurant in Chinatown in Boston. And we went into this place. It was in a basement. This is the scariest place I've ever been in. Wait, 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 wait. The minute you have in a ba the, the place is in a basement, that's when you should be like, can't we just go get Arby's? And then, like, the front room was all these tanks with, like, live fish that were very much the size of the tank. Like, the unhappiest looking fish you've ever seen. We walk in. At, I'm not exaggerating this one bit. As we walk through the room, a door in the back opens and there's people gambling in the back. They seat us. Our waiter comes up. Our waiter is all fucking beat up. Like, freshly beat up. Our friend had to order for us because nobody there spoke English. It was like the scariest place. Like the, the, so, the if you lose, do you? They were like sit in the corner so we can flip the table up if need be. So, if you lose, like, do you end up on the menu? I don't know. It was. I mean, the food was really good. Do you remember a little while back they were talking about uh, doing a potentially a spinoff of Breaking Bad? They're still doing it, aren't they? Yeah. Better Call Saul. Yeah, I, I just, I don't think, I, I think real life kind of trumped them on this one. Meth lab found at California retirement community. Police and residents oh. said, police and residents of a retirement community were stunned that a 64-year-old Northern California man arrested during a traffic stop was accused of cooking methamphetamine inside his apartment at the facility for seniors. Um... Robert Short of Fresno was pulled over in a routine traffic stop late Saturday. During the stop, officers learned that Short was on supervised release for selling meth. After a search of Short's car, they found four ounces of crystal meth. Investigators went to Short's apartment at the California League Fresno Village. There they found a half pound of crystal meth, the street value about $1,700, some heroin, and materials for a small meth lab. See, all right, now I watch Breaking Bad end to end. And I'm still confused about how people can have, like, like we did that story about someone who had a meth lab in her purse. Mm -hmm. Nothing about that show suggested that you could fit that shit in your purse. Like, the small setup they had was still in a Winnebago. Well, no, they have something called Shake and Bake, which is where you put all the stuff into a soda bottle and you shake it. And it's crappy meth, but it's still meth. It's but then crappy. How does it crystallize? I don't know. I just I'm going on what the news tells me. Breaking Bad didn't teach me enough about this. You know, I would think they would have figured it out when they noticed that, you know, in the morning jog when all the seniors are out, he's the one going the fastest every single time. And stopping to talk to everybody on the way. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, it's a great fucking day. How you doing? Oh, I got a direction. It won't go away. Hi. 
And everybody seems to go a little bit faster after he talks to them. <laughs> or, alternately, their knees suddenly get broken. I like to visit Grandpa, but he won't let me have any of the blue candy. I was actually in a candy store in New York City yesterday, and I saw blue rock candy, and I just, just like showing up on air, just being like, hey. That's a thing now, the blue rock candy that has become like a bit of a thing. Yeah, I consider just showing up on air and That's... popping something seeing, and seeing how many of the viewers would be like, oh my god. You know, it's nice to see seniors active, but I'm pretty sure there are more, there are better ways to spend your golden years than... Well, you know, in today's economy, who can afford to retire? You gotta have a plan. You see... You got to have a post-retirement job plan. Yeah, but can you really see Grandpa out there on the corner with Skinny Pete? He'd be like, yo, I got a dime bag. What you want? What you want? I got it. Come on over. Oh, what you want, Pete. man? What you want, man? I got it. I love Skinny Pete. You know, he's got his, 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 the cuffs on his pants are like three inches too high. And he's got the black socks with the sandals and the Panama hat. He's like, I got you covered, bitches. Science, bitch! I mean, they kind of dressed Walter White a little bit like that. Little. I mean, the first episode, he's out in the middle of the highway in his tidy whiteies, and they never got rid of the tidy whiteies for the whole run of the show. <laughs> Which was... That's... But they always made sure to remind you that this was a dorky science teacher who just happened to be a violent sociopath. It's one of those things I have never understood why men just don't get rid of the whole tidy whitey thing. It, no one looks good in those. No one. Just get boxers and be done with it, dude. No one. I looks mean, good really, in the they should be illegal. Yeah, they're they're kind of awful. Yeah. So briefs are good. Boxers, boxer briefs, both excellent options. Tidy whiteys, not so much. I've got a very bad option though. Do you want to hear it? No. Oh my god, this gentleman crossed your legs! Hey! Yes, I do want to hear it now because there have been a lot of those for the ladies lately. Do you... We have. I make this joke and I can't wait for the not all men to come up for this one, but it's true. Guys will stick their dick in anything. And this is not. This is not exaggeration. This is not hyperbole. We have literally seen. Men put pool toys. Pool toys. And this is compounded by last week. Remember the guy who's got his arm stuck down the toilet for his phone? Please tell me we're not about to do a story about a guy who tried to fuck a toilet. Close ish. Man gets penis stuck in pipe for two days. Man named Lian Tian, a resident of uh, Kwansu City, came up with possibly the world's most bizarre excuse of how his penis got stuck in the pipe. He said he was painting in the nude and slipped. Right. Right, 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 right. Why is it there's always a slip involved in all these? Whenever your dick accidentally goes somewhere you don't want it to go, you slipped. And why did it just happen to be, how do we say, able to penetrate? Yeah. So that doesn't happen on your way to the ground, you know, as I understand it. Uh, Chen61, good on you, dude, uh, said his private parts got stuck in the pipe, which is used to take water from the building's air conditioning unit. Oh, my God. Take that where you will. Why yeah. he stayed with the pipe stuck around his mandood for two days is because he thought no one would believe his story. However, he had to seek medical help. We developed a fever and called doctors who in turn called the fire brigade. So oh, he cut the pipe from the wall. It took firefighters four hours to cut off the pipe around Chen's genitals. Now you see, guys, I know you're and low. that's got to be scary. Like, when they take a saw to that area. For four hours! 
That's like one of those endurance... It's like X-Factor shit going on there, you know? Alright, first of all, why would you fuck a pipe? They make toys! There's no resistance or anything. Christ's sakes! <laughs> why would you fuck a pipe without any lube? He lives in China. That's where they make the fucking toys. Just go yeah, down the street. Yeah, but they send them all here. Yeah. Uh, Dispenser gifts. Yeah, uh, Will Jr.'s going two days? I would have got a help within two seconds. Yeah. Like that dude hung around, no pun intended, for two days with a pipe on his dick. And was he just thinking, you know, maybe I should call some... No, I can't. I just can't. But what Too embarrassing. What makes you look at a pipe and think that's sexy? Like, it's not squishy. No. And it's not very, you know, receptive. No, no. You know, you're not going to get a whole lot of feedback there. No. I mean, I suppose you could make a homemade fleshlight, but... Talk about... Parts. He was laying I'm some pipe. Saw, now I'm thinking I saw instructions somewhere on how to make a homemade fleshlight. Where do you find this shit? <laughs> I don't know. Why do you know? Oh, hold on, I've got that bookmarked. I get bored and I click on things. Hmm. Just ha you know, I've always wanted a flashlight, but I've never wanted to spend the money. How do I make one? You know, some people like the DIY. Plumbing snake, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> some people like to the satisfaction of making something that they can use. And use and that? use. This is going to be gonna bugging you all. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google it after we go off the air now. Cause you're going to, all week, you're going to be at work going, man, where did I see how to make that homemade fleshlight? Oh, that lipstick will be $5, please. There's nothing in my store that's $5. Yeah, that's true. Our lipsticks start at like $25. It's, guys, really, if you must get toy. If you really are that, get something that has been designed, literally, by scientists and engineers to put your dick in. Yeah. They made it for you to do, they, do you really want all the, they put or so much hard work. A, or perhaps another willing human person. True, there's an option there too. Yeah. May have been designed by scientists and engineers, it's yeah, the like 21st century, but well, whatever. The, the, I think, well, they're just Disney stars, as far as I, I know. Mm. Last I checked. Well, no, there's that. There's the real life Idoru. There's a Japanese pop star that doesn't even exist. Just, just, yeah, I, th I think the first thing we learned this week is. Oh, hey, Tolly says you can make a flashlight with a Pringles can. He knows. Talk to Tolly for all your homemade flashlight needs. He's probably got an Etsy shop. What? This is it a Pringles can? Because if there's any yeah, like leftover I, bits, tiny, no, tiny little you clean it. Then, if I recall correctly, you like line it with I don't remember what, and then put a condom inside it or something. It involves like plastic, and I forget what you use for the filling, like jello or something, maybe bubble wrap. I, don't know. I mean, it can't be that hard to figure out. You know, we need to really like rethink. Or just microwave a halved watermelon, says Emily. We, we, we need to rethink the whole necessity is the mother of invention thing. Seriously, need to rethink that shit. Cause I don't. Does the flavor of the can make a difference? <laughs> yeah, you want to stay away from the salt and vinegar. 
and that shit's gonna burn like a motherfucker. <laughs> Probably also the barbecue. If they have that orange stuff and you don't want to look like you tried to self tan your dick. <laughs> Oh my god. This is why I'm glad in England they don't have Pringles cans. Okay, Tolly says condom dish towel Pringles can. Yes, that's right. You stuff the towel in, and then you kind of stuff the condom in and wrap it around the outside. This is like the worst episode of Mr. Rogers ever. You're learning it's shit. Martha Stewart, Martha Stewart fucking. You're learning all the worst shit tonight. Hey, we might have just made somebody's week with that information. This week on Bill Nye, Bill Nye teaches you how to make a dildo from a cucumber. Is there really a process to that? <laughs> hey, well, he'd warm. probably wire it up with, like, you know, fucking motor and pumps and shit. Step one, throw a condom <laughs> on it. Step two, prep it. Uh... So the first thing we learned this week is how to make a flashlight at home. Engineers and scientists are paid a whole lot of money just to provide you with things to fuck. You don't want to put engineers and scientists out of a job, do you? No, then stop sticking your dick in a pipe. The, you know, the, the euphemism You're bad for the economy. The euphemism laying pipe. Not what that means. Not what that means. That's not that's not how one lays pipe. No. They don't really mean that you should lay a pipe. Not what they mean. We learned don't that so literal. We learned that while life may begin at 40, uh, life sentences begin at 60. They can. Uh don't 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 cook meth in your fucking retirement home. What are you doing? Just don't cook meth, man. That's <laughs> You know why? It's one of those things like that you could just then we have a plant that will literally it's grow so in anything. Why would you do that? We as humans have a plant that will literally grow in any goddamn thing, and the entire process of making it into a drug is to let it dry. Why would you, you know, get that's, that's a different kind of high than meth though? Ah. Uh... Well, that's why God gave us coffee. Just eat that shit, the espresso beans, and deal. Well, we did go D.A. Scott Jr. from fucking a pool toy to fucking a pipe to fucking a Pringles can. And I honestly don't know which one of those three is the saddest. We've learned this week that the fine tradition of attempting to steal things in your pants... Continues in Florida. Lives on. This this is like an American, you know, it's like one of those things that like back. I was back really hoping that it would make a Freudian slip when you said Publix and call it the pubic. <laughs> but you didn't. You know, we have traditions that linger to this day that started off as like survival shit when we were like, you know, in the olden days. I imagine like a thousand years from now, they'll have like holidays where they'll traditionally steal things in their pants to honor their ancestor. <laughs> What would you call that holiday? Stupidia. There you go. We, uh, we learned that you're not faster than a horse. Stop trying to find out for sure. You don't need to test this. This does not need empirical or, experimentation. Or you, know, you really feel the need, run along outside the track. <clears throat> Because mm. inside the track, that's where the big feet with the metal stand. Yeah, that's where the death. Yeah, that's where yeah. the death is. They they put metal on their feet, and the horses how live. How much does it weigh? About a half a ton, if not a ton. Yeah, they're big. That's fast moving death. We've learned that kids. Will do the thing you think they couldn't possibly do. Yeah, oh, that's like your job. 
Like the one thing you never planned for, that's the thing they're going to do. That's the way they're going to wind up in the ER. You can baby-proof the house, cover all the outlets, cover everything with bubble wrap and foam, and that kid's going to be allergic to foam. <laughs> it's their job. And finally, we learned this week that a love between a man and his pool toy can span years. A love that dare not speak its name. That is a romance a going that on there. Not, a love that dare not squeak its name. <laughs> oh. 